to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving. I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, well, we're going to spend five minutes introducing one of the most important statistical tools you can use inside your business to ensure that you get the proper process capability and please the hell out of your customers and that is measurement system analysis. You know there are certain statistical tools that really aren't necessary. There are certain statistical tools that we just teach sometimes for the, for the sake of it but measurement system analysis is really a great statistical tool that you should appreciate and use correctly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to introduce sensibly measurement system analysis to you. So let me start off with a very uh, straightforward statement. Every measurement system you have is wrong. Every measurement system you have is wrong. The only question that you need to answer is how wrong is it? Okay, how wrong is it? Everybody thinks that they have a ruby tipped computer controlled coordinate measuring machine with a granite top and it is the most accurate fantastic thing in the world. That is simply not true. It is a guess. It might be a good guess of what the size of your components are, but it has error in the system. The question is, how much error? And measurement system analysis is going to tell you that. Now I know you think, ah, every measurement system I have isn't wrong. Because I calibrate it. I'm afraid calibration only deals with one of the variables in the system and that is the machine, the piece of equipment that you've chosen to use. Now don't get me wrong, should you calibrate? Yes of course you should. Does it mean that your measurement system works? Absolutely not. It doesn't tell you the error in the method and the, the componentry and all the, the elements that make up a system. So the first thing we want to do is properly define what a measurement system is. A measurement system is not the guessing stick that you're using. This is part of it. But there is the item that you're measuring, the material. There is the method that you're using. There is the environment. There 
that you're in. And there is the people who are using the machine. And those five elements constitute a measurement system. Calibration just deals with the first one. So let me just give you a simple kind of raw example of why a calibrated piece of equipment may not work and that the problem could be in the method and the material. Imagine you have a fantastic piece of measuring equipment. It measures to a millionth of a millimeter. It is that good. And then what you do is you machine a component and you ask your piece of equipment to tell you the diameter of that. Now obviously this is an extreme example, the fact that the component is so oval, you would see that. But if I tried to measure the diameter of this plastic pen and it was slightly oval, remember we're measuring to a millionth of a millimeter, I wouldn't be able to see that it was oval by eye. How would I find out that it's oval? Well, of course, in order to figure this out, maybe what you're gonna have to do is measure the biggest part of the diameter and the smallest part of the diameter and maybe take an average. Now, what is that immediately that you do that? that that's a guess of what the diameter is. It's an estimate of what the diameter is. Now, the, the problem is coming from the material and it's coming from the method we've chosen to measure in two places for that method. But I could have chosen four places for that method and taken the average. I could take six places and take the average. I could take eight places and take the average. Different methods will come up with different estimates. Which estimate is the best in this case? You're going to have to decide. Problem, of course, lies with the material. Maybe what you might want to do is to sort out your machining center first so that you get something that's round, perhaps. But if you give the, the calibrated piece of equipment a difficult task to do, then it will make mistakes. You get error in your measurement system. And here's what it does to your view of your process. Your process is making a distribution. So it's producing parts and it's making a distribution. Now you would like to see that distribution, but unfortunately, before you see that distribution, you have to put it through a second process, which is the measuring process. So this is the manufacturing process here. And what you actually see when you plot a graph, draw a histogram, do a capability study, whatever it happens to be, you see these two added together. So what you end up seeing is something that is wider than what was originally there. So this is the original distribution here. It looks bigger because this adds to it and creates that inflation. Now if the inflation is bad enough and in the wrong place, of course what does it do? It makes you think you've got defects when you really haven't got defects. So getting your measurement system analysis right, finding out how big this slice is, is a crucial statistical tool inside your organization. And that's why you need statistical tools like this, because it helps you understand your defect rate and get the problem sorted out correctly. Because it could be your problem is like this. There's your process. Here's what you are seeing. Lots of defects out in the tails here. Is your manufacturing process the problem? No, it's this thing, this thing's really big. You've got lots of error in your measurement system. It's inflating the distribution. 
it makes you think you've got a defect rate that isn't really there. If you go on work here and try and improve this process, is that gonna have any effect on your defect rate? Oddly any at all, not to mention the fact that your manufacturing process is already brilliant. So getting it even better is gonna be hard yards. You're working to try and improve your manufacturing process. You're getting nowhere because the problem lies here. MSA is a really important tool inside your organization. And one last point, by the way, you use MSA every time you use the guessing stick. So if I've got this, it's a very crude caliper I've got here. If I've got this caliper here and I'm trying to measure the diameter, I would do an MSA for that measurement system. But if I then tuck it and try to measure the length of something, I would do another MSA. Every task I ask this piece of equipment to do must have an MSA. Whereas calibration happens once for the equipment. MSA belongs to the task, the method and the material that you're asking the equipment to measure. And therefore you could have one piece of measuring equipment with 20 MSAs because you are asking it to measure 20 different components, 20 different shapes, 20 different elements of problem. You have an MSA for each one of them. You have a capability result for each one of them. And this is a route to improving the capability. Measurement system analysis. Use it and improve your process capability. Thank <laughs> you.